Hi, and thanks for watching. I'm Philip Hawkins. This video is really for a church that I was working with. Um, their Mac could only have a couple of extended desktops, so we were trying to figure out how to send an NDI signal over to their other Mac, which is where they stream from OBS. So uh, we did figure something out with, uh, with a color key, chroma key, um, but I think we found a better solution that's built into ProPresenter. Um, there's just a few things that need to be downloaded for OBS. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. And um, all the links are going to be in the description. And this is a total step-by-step. -step. So um, yeah, just follow along and you should be able to get set up pretty easily. Thanks. All right. So the first thing I want to know is that Currently, OBS is on version 28, so if you go here to download, and uh, they were downloading Intel, so if you are on an Intel Mac, then you need to go here, or you would go here. If you're on Mac OS, you would go over to this Apple Silicone, uh, which is, that's what I'm on, actually, is a, is a silicone, so you would simply download it. Now, the problem is, is that um, some of the plugins that we're using are not ready for Mac OS. So if you look at this compatibility page right here, um, which is just a little bit down here, you go to OBS plugins, compatibility, we're going to be using stream effects. And of course, the OBS NDI um, plugin. And so those are both in progress. Now, obviously, as they get that updated, you can update to OBS 28. But um, and maybe by the time you watch this, we'll be on an even later version of OBS. So you'll definitely want to check this page for uh, any compatibility issues. All right. So first thing we're going to do, I've already got these pulled up. And like I said, I'll, I'll link these in the description. Um, first thing we're going to do is download stream effects. So um, I haven't done this on this machine yet. So it should be uh, just a total fresh walkthrough of this um, so we're going to go down here this is my mac os uh, so depending on what obviously computer you're on you may this may be a little bit different maybe windows for you but uh, we're on mac so we're going to do that that'll download we also need to download i i actually need to download obs i don't have it on this computer so I'm going to come down here, go to Mac, OBS, download that. All right, and this is the plugin for NDI. So as I scroll down here to the bottom, I'll see, uh, let's see here, there it is. It always has this PKG, this package um, extension. So I'm going to click on that, that'll download. Uh, you also need to download, as it says here, let's see, macOS, it says here, you need to download this runtime, NDI runtime, uh, which I guess they just work in tandem. So I'm just going to hit Command while I click this, and it's going to download it. Uh, it opens the new tab, but in any case, that's downloaded now. So, um, so from there, all I need to do is install these. So I'm go to my download folder and uh, just start installing. I think I'll start with OBS. It's as simple as drag and drop. It's probably going to ask. Nope, didn't ask for my password at all. All right. All right, so I went through that pretty quickly, um, and that's just because it's, I mean, you just click on it and open it up and you follow the process. It's pretty simple. So um, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and open OBS. Let's see. Let's go down here. Okay, it's over here. All right, and so one of the things it'll do is ask you for uh, permissions 
for screen recording, a couple of things. So, so it looks like I need to add OBS manually to that list. All right, so let's open up OBS again. So now that we have all the OBS plugins downloaded and we have our privacy settings set up, I'm going to go ahead into our screens, configure screens, and we're going to create a new screen that is an NDI feed. And NDI will allow us to go from one computer to another uh, over the network. If, if you're going within the computer, you could set up a siphon and uh, that should do the same thing, but we're going to set up an NDI feed to go from computer to computer. So we'll do 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is what we set our OBS at. I'm going to go ahead and name this NDI to OBS here, as well as up here. Go ND, oh, NDI to OBS. All right. Now the important part here is to go over to Alpha Key and tick this box, Enable. Now Alpha Key, unlike Chroma Key, and I don't fully understand all this, but unlike Chroma Key, Alpha Key somehow tells the other computer, hey, this is a background, and you take this background out. So it essentially sends a transparent image to OBS. So let's go over to OBS again. We'll open that up. And we'll set up a... First of all, I'm going to set up, and you'll notice here we have our NDI now, uh, whereas before you wouldn't have seen that. And that's because we put in those plugins. There's the NDI plugins, and then there's the stream effects. And the stream effects is what allows OBS to use the alpha key signal. So we'll set up a source. I'm going to call this our cam1. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is just so we can see a camera signal. So that's our PTZ Optics camera there. So we should get a camera signal. There we go. And then we'll add the NDI source from ProPresenter. So we're going to go NDI. Um, we'll call it from ProPresenter 7. And do this, NDI to OBS. And now you'll see we have our lyrics box displaying up here and um, we have the shadow box. And this was actually the key uh, thing for me when we did chroma key, this shadow box disappeared. Um, so I'm again, not super familiar with this stuff. So I just know it had something to do with that color being close enough to the green color that was behind it in our, our chroma key. So the white lettering showed up okay, but this shadow box did not show up. And I, I really uh, wanted to figure out a way that we could get not only the font to show up correctly, because that was kind of showing up a little bit skinnier, um, but also these shadow box lines. So I, I really like these because um, it just adds some contrast. So if you get a, a lighter background, those white letters will show up uh, much better. So that's pretty much it as far as setting up your NDI feed with Alpha Key. Now there's a couple other things that I wanted to go over in the way that you set up ProPresenter for your live stream on that screen. So um, if you already know how to set up your themes and looks and all of that, um, you can skip the rest of this video. But I'm going to go over that now. So you'll notice that we have this as a um, lyrics. This is how it shows up actually on our on our screen. Um, you can kind of see back there. We have it um, all the way at the top of the screen so that people can see over other people's heads and that kind of thing. So um, that's just how we have it set up for the room. On the live stream, we want it as a lower third, obviously. So um, we're going to do that by going over to Edit Looks, and we're going to add a theme to 
uh, our music look here. So we have several looks, and these all correspond to different parts of the service. So we have music scroll as is a reference to our transition, and we have music fade again transition. But we have video, and we have sermon, and so you know those are obviously different parts of the service, pre-service, that kind of thing. So I'm going to start with the music. And we'll set up our lyrics in lower third with this theme. And immediately, um, well, I have to make it live. And now you'll see that it's on our lower third. So pretty simple, pretty easy to do. And of course, I'm going to do the same thing with these others as well. All right, so the next thing we want to take a look at is you'll notice that when I hit this background, that shows up and takes over our feed for OBS. Um, and in fact, I'm going to go over here and switch this preview to that so we don't have to keep switching back and forth. But um, yeah, you'll see that that, you know, we've got our lyrics down there, but this background shows up. So we need to go back to our looks and um, we're going to take out the media layer. And again, this is just for the music portion of the service and the reason for that is sometimes we have a video or something like that that we want to see or a sermon slide something like that so for every section of the service we want to change the looks to um, match what it is that we want to display on our service all right so let's shift over to how we do our sermon slides and probably a lot of you are like us you're using full screen JPEGs of the slides themselves. You know, our pastor creates them in PowerPoint and then we export them as a JPEG and then we display those on the screen. And really there's probably two things you're gonna to wanna to do with them. Either you're gonna to want to clear it, uh, you're gonna to wanna to display it and then clear it off your live stream while leaving it on the screen in house or you're just gonna want it not to show up on your live stream at all. So let's talk about the first one. Um, the way we do this, and I actually have a video I'll be posting on this, but the way we do this is I use two of the slide layers. I use the slide layer and the media layer, excuse me, two of the layers, slide layer and the media layer. And how we do that is you load all the JPEGs into a presentation and then you can select them all and go down to convert media action to slide element. And what that does is it makes an exact, um, it takes that media and makes it a, a like a shape on your slide. And then really you just have to go back and it's kind of tedious, but you go back and uh, drag your media back onto the corresponding slide, you know, one by one. I haven't found a faster way to do that, but one by one you drag your media back on. And so now you have both a media queue and a slide element on every single slide. And they're the exact same thing. And what that allows you to do is simply clear the slide layer, which I have a hotkey for, but uh, you clear that slide layer over here and that reveals your camera again on your live stream. This is our live stream. This is our, our uh, main sanctuary screen and our stage display. So really quickly in review, what we went over today was uh, how to set up the OBS plugins for NDI. So we downloaded those and got those installed and set up the permissions for, for OBS. You probably have OBS already if you're watching this, but we had to make sure we had the right uh, version that's going to work with those plugins. And again, hopefully by the time you see this, they'll have those plugins updated. Um, and then we set up that NDI source first over here in ProPresenter. Um, uh, excuse me, we went to our screens. We set up a new screen as an NDI source. And then obviously one of the most important parts of that was to enable the alpha key. And that's what sends it over to OBS um, and that stream effects plugin being utilized. Uh, allows us to display some lyrics while um, we'll just take another quick look at that here. So that allows us to display some lyrics and get that through on our OBS. 
Yeah, and of course you can always turn it on and off here if you want, but you know, ideally you're gonna set it up. Uh, you're gonna set up your looks and different parts of the service to uh, display things how you want them to be displayed. So, all right. Well, I guess that does it for this video. Um, I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. I know that the end of that was a lot of uh, a lot of details that maybe some of you really already knew. Um, you didn't really need all that, but I know that some of you have probably not even really uh, looked at how to use looks and different screens and that kind of thing. So um, I just uh, I hope that was really helpful for you guys. Um, if you have any questions or any comments, definitely leave them below. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. And until then, I pray that you have steady hands, strong voices, and full hearts. Thanks.